Hello and welcome to Welch Lab Chemistry. During this video series, we will be undertaking the synthesis as disclosed in our chemistry materials paper from 2016. If you want to learn more about the synthesis and the usefulness of the products that we make, I recommend that you read our paper. A link can be found in the video description. Our target material is an N-annulated perylene diimide dimer. According to the paper, this material was made in six steps with an overall yield of about 50%. In this video, we will be alkylating perylene dianhydride using ethylpropylamine to form ethylpropyl PDI. Ethylpropyl PDI is a very useful red dye that is often used as the starting point to synthesize PDI-based materials. This reaction requires four materials, perylene dianhydride, imidazole, ethylpropylamine, and methanol. First, 5 grams of perylene dianhydride is added to a 250 milliliter round bottom flask. Second, enough imidazole is added to the round bottom flask to half fill the flask. The imidazole is transferred using the same beaker as the perylene dianhydride to help ensure that all the perylene dianhydride has been transferred. This imidazole was previously used for the same reaction and was successfully recovered. This imidazole is slightly contaminated with a small amount of perylene diamide. This is likely what's causing it to be slightly pink. Since the most likely impurity is the same as our product, it is not a concern to have a small amount of contamination. Imidazole is an unusual solvent because it is a solid at room temperature, but it does melt at the temperatures required for this reaction. You will see later in the video that imidazole is very easy to separate from the product whereas other high-boiling polar solvents are more challenging to separate from the product. After adding the solids, the round bottom flask is placed in a bead bath. We like to use bead baths in place of oil baths because they reduce the fire risk and keep the lab cleaner than oil baths. Finally, ethylpropylamine is added via syringe. After adding all the reagents, a reflux condenser is placed on the round bottom flask. Since this reaction is not at reflux, water is not required in the reflux condenser. Instead, the condenser is added to increase the headspace and was probably not necessary for this reaction. The reaction is heated until it is molten, and then it is stirred while molten for 24 hours. After a day, the hot plate is removed and the flask is set on a cork ring. If you look closely, you can see small crystals of imidazole on the surface of the reaction mixture. Sometimes, there are many more of these crystals, and when there is, a larger headspace may reduce contamination. To a 500 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask is added about 200 milliliters of methanol and it is stirred rapidly. At this point, the reaction mixture is immediately added to the methanol. This step must be done quickly since as soon as the reaction mixture is removed from the bead bath, the imidazole cools and starts to solidify. If the reaction mixture solidifies, it can be very difficult to remove from the round bottom flask. This transfer must also be done carefully since the reaction mixture is still very hot. In order to transfer all the reaction mixture to the Erlenmeyer flask, the round bottom flask is rinsed with methanol. Thanks to the very low solubility of ethylpropyl PDI in methanol, a large amount of methanol can be used in this rinsing step without having to be concerned about losing product. After the reaction mixture is fully transferred to the Erlenmeyer flask, the methanol mixture is allowed to stir for a couple hours. Stirring the PDI in methanol allows the PDI to clump up, which makes filtering significantly faster. Since both imidazole and ethylpropylamine are highly soluble in methanol, this method ensures that what we isolate from this filtration is pure ethylpropyl PDI. The filtrate of this solution is a dark red color, which does indicate the presence of ethylpropyl PDI. While the solution is quite dark, this only represents a small amount of PDI and is a relatively small loss of product. A small amount of methanol is used to rinse the Erlenmeyer and the sides of the Beepner funnel. After, the product is washed several times with methanol to remove any residual imidazole. The product is then dried in ambient conditions overnight to remove any remaining methanol. The product is then transferred to a pre-weighed beaker. After weighing, I found that we had isolated 6.29 grams of ethylpropyl PDI. This corresponds to a percent yield of 93%. The largest loss is likely the PDI that remained in solution and colored the filtrate red. To confirm the purity of the compound, we examined the proton NMR and compared it to the literature values. 
On close examination, we see that the only visible peaks that are not attributed to product are those at 7.2 ppm and 1.5 ppm. These peaks correspond to chloroform and water respectively, and are from the solvent that the NMR was run in, and are not due to impurities in the product. Since we have obtained a high yield of highly pure product, we can move on to the next step, which is the nitration of ethylpropyl PDI. Thank you for watching. Please share this video and leave a comment. See you next time for the nitration of ethylpropyl perylene diamide.